ground you might see nothing but dust flat brown and boring nothing special you might detest dust when it gets on your clothes curse it when it gets up your nose oh when you touch the ground you might feel nothing but dirt gritty grimy your mother doesn't like it no dirt and dust they got a bad reputation so let me introduce you to soil soil is amazing it keeps us alive would you believe without it we could not survive fed income this might come as a shock but there is nothing between our life and solid rock but soil I was on my travels around the world, hunting for technical solutions to the water crisis. I now think back to this as my era of naive optimism, simply believing that all that was needed was to develop technology for the more effective use of water, and the world's water problems would be resolved. Little did I know of the traumatic learning experiences that lay ahead. I was in the Middle East and was taken to a ghost town. Not an old ghost town, but a modern ghost town. The town was eerie. All the houses were empty. The people had simply picked up what they could carry with them and left, leaving many of their possessions behind. The date palms were all dead. Many had just fallen over. There was a well which used to be used to irrigate the date palms. But this was now derelict, and like everything else, simply abandoned. What had happened? Well, we don't know all the details for sure, but the story goes something like this. For many years, going back to biblical times, the village had prospered by growing and selling dates. They also grew other crops for their own consumption. The town was not exactly prosperous, but comfortable in its own way, and healthy and green. Donkeys would walk around the wells, pulling up buckets of water, which would be tipped into the channels which irrigated the date palms. This had been the way of life for centuries. Maybe like the water in the wells, going back to biblical times. Then one of the farmer's sons, I don't know his name so I will call him Abdullah, won a scholarship to go and study irrigation in America. He learnt about pipes and pumps and infiltration rates and crop factors, application rates, water holding capacity, scheduling and all the facts that an irrigation engineer should know. Then he came back to the donkey and the wells and the open furrows. This is terrible, he told his father. We are wasting water and losing production. He could see how the water was being lost along the furrows with only a little of the water actually reaching the trees. So together they travelled to Dubai and spoke to the bank manager about a loan to improve their property. Yes, this is just what the country needs, thought the bank manager. So the loan was granted and the pumps and pipes and dripper tape and all the equipment needed to modernise the irrigation system were bought. The results were fantastic. The dates were better quality than they'd ever produced, so they fetched a higher price in the market. Production was also increased, so they had no difficulty in repaying the loan. So they negotiated an even bigger loan and bought more land and became the wealthiest family in the village. Their next door neighbour began to take notice and he was soon imitating the success story. Why not me, he thought, so he too set up a modern irrigation system. But all that water that they thought was being wasted, just soaking into the ground, was in fact going back into the water table and replenishing the wells. So the water table and the level in the well started to drop. For Abdullah and his neighbours this was not a problem. They simply extended their pipes to suck deeper. But for the other farmers it was a real problem. Their poor donkeys were having to work harder and faster to get the water. If you ever think you have pulled the short straw in life, let me tell you that you are still way ahead of a donkey in the Middle East. 
One day, one of the donkeys, belonging to one of the other farmers, just rolled over and died. He thought about this and realised that the only solution was to get with the times and put in his own diesel pump. The water table dropped even further and soon all the farmers had put in deep bores and even more powerful pumps. Then the palms began to look a bit sickly and stopped bearing fruit. The farmers tasted the water and it was salty. The water table had dropped so much that water was simply seeping in from the sea. And of course the water table was now so low that sea water continued to flow in and the palms and all the crops died. There was no option. Everyone in the village had to move on as best they could. Imagine how I felt. I had been travelling all over the world, visiting research institutes, looking for a technological solution. I was totally overawed by the amount of research on water technology being conducted around the world. Every country would have its own research centre, all doing excellent research, conducted by competent and professional scientists. I was learning many ways to use water more effectively, in the belief that I was doing the right thing. Yet, right in front of me, this very technology had destroyed a community. Who was to blame? 